All right, Shalom Rastafari. This is Wendem Yadon. This is Ras Yadinos Tafari. Ras Ayadon is reporting for the Lion of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty. And, and we're broadcasting um, on uh, the YouTubes, and you should be watching this perhaps on Rastafari Sabbatical or, or Ethiopian World Net. And if that's not there, then it's 911, Ethiopian World Net 911. Um, you can pre-subscribe to it, you know, because we've been getting a lot of haters because the truth is an offense, but it is not a sin. So let's move forward, forward ever, backward never, not back to Africa, but forward. Now, what we see right here is interesting. Um, we caught this um, archaeological um, um, piece here on one of the Hebrew Israelite sites. Um, Yekrita and Ne, that I think we saved the site or we saved some information, we'll be able to find it hopefully again and reference it. But it's out there, and um, hopefully we'll get a chance to, well, we're sharing this right here. Now, what was interesting about this is that it was, I think, the background image to the site. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, you can see that the people are, are black people. These are some might say um, it's uh, the Egyptian style. But when you look at the, the features, you look at the people, you see an Ethiopian Hebrew or, or black people. Or nowadays they would call this a Negro people or like a, 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 a Negro or a Latino um, kind of group of people, you know, black, Spanish, Hispanic. You know how they try to divide and conquer us by... Um, seeking to exterminate from our own hearts and minds our nationality as Beta Israel, and moreover, prophetically, as Ethiopian Hebrews. But this particular archaeological find, and there's a lot of these things out there that are just, um, when we say buried, uh, academically, they're, they're, they're buried. I mean, they're trying to find a way to explain away these things, but this one here was interesting. No further really information on it, but the Holy Spirit, those of you who have a love, have received the love of the truth, you can see clearly what it's demonstrating right here. It's obviously a piece of a, either a broken wall painting. You know, a lot of folks say that there's no proof of um, um, the exodus of the Jews, but we have to ask, well, what Jews are you speaking of and what do you mean by that? Now, of course, there's a lot of information out there that clarifies who are the biblical Hebrews, who are the biblical Israelites, and they are basically the once lost but now found um, black sheep of the family or black peoples, and namely, mainly the Americas, the Caribbean, but throughout the world, because Yahweh, because of the word, the prophets, and the Biat, and the Vim, and the Beam, has prophesied that. God's people will be scattered throughout, and there's at least, I think, 58 different curses that um, help to identify who these um, true Israelites, Beta Israel, the house of Israel in my father's house, there are many mansions. And a lot of the fraud of what's going on with modern-day so-called state of Israel has come out even from some of their own sources. Sounds like Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, where many will come over and they will worship, they will bow down and recognize that the true God, the true Yahweh, the true Ha Elohim Baruch Hu, the, 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 the true He who is who He is, He who be who He be, His divine majesty is in I and I. Praise Yah. Now, let's look at this for a moment. Um, this p particular piece here, we're going to do a little more research into it, but it was just so, um, I mean, even the color is so vibrant in, in the scene, you know, so um, so exquisite, you know, I mean, when you look, okay, now, now, now let's examine this, let's examine the artwork, right, let's examine the artwork, because it's a picture um, tells or paints a, a thousand words, all right, now, if we look into the scripture, there are many words concerning the exodus of the biblical Beta Israel. 
But they tell us, they, you know, who control the media and everything like that, they who um, so-called control this world of seclura, um, they who have deceived the whole world, they tell us there's no evidence of this. You know, the closer they get is the Beni Hassan, and you've probably seen those uh, pictures here, and they, even though in different, in different versions it seems to get lighter and lighter. But, but this one here is just, just totally exquisite, you know. I mean, the colors are vibrant, even yummy. You can look at, I mean, look at this blue right here. You see this blue down here, right, like a sapphire type of blue. Now, if you look right here, this is obviously water. Right, this is obviously water. Now, it's not like these people are just going and just walking by, like you know, just just going walking through a park or having a picnic or something like that. There's something else that's going on right here. I mean, first of all, let us let us look at this scene now. Now, who, who is this right here? I mean, um, it doesn't seem to be an angel, but it, it is almost angelic like. But remember, this is ancient Egypt. This is from ancient Egypt. This is the art and fact. As it says in the psalm, it says that um, the truth will spring out of the earth. You know what I mean? The truth will spring out of the earth. Now, um, let me just do this right here. Let me find that particular verse. Eclipse, uh, when, when the may, when the moche, hitoche, and atoche. Um, the truth will spring out of the earth. Um, that particular scripture, I haven't quoted that for a moment, but it, it's very important, especially in what we're speaking about right here. Um, it's Psalm 85, 11. It says, Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Interesting. Remember Righteousness, he's wearing white, remember the garment, the linen, right? The linen, the white robes. Now, if you look at this, 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 like we said, it looks like it's, it's black people, is what they call Hispanic people. Um, it is our people, it's what they, you could call it, say, it's Ethiopian type peoples. You know what I'm saying? So this can be interpreted on a multi level because it's speaking to the diaspora, right? But it's also testifying to the exodus, right? Who, who are these? These are not just people who, who are bathing or swimming. This, people are not doing laps, backstroke, or whatever here. I mean, they have a stroke, but it's not a backstroke. And see, it's broken off. Can you imagine the, the, the fuller picture? You understand what it really tells. I mean, even the writing up here. Notice the writing. The writing up here is, is not so much Egyptian. It's almost like proto what they call proto-Hebrew, or we call archaic uh, Ethiopic or Afro-Shemitic. You know, Hebrew is Afro-Shemitic. Ethiopic is Afro-Shemitic. Amharic um, of Ethiopia is also Afro-Shemitic, as Arabic is even Afro-Shemitic, but there's other things that have come in there as well as the Quran, if you understand the different languages that are there, it kind of testifies to it. But what's interesting up here. This is not, you know, this is not ancient Egyptian um, writing. Even from this distance right here, you can see that it's what they call original or old Hebrew, right? Old Hebrew up here. We're going to zoom in and do some zoom-ins, but we just want to just have ones that's like, this is art appreciation. You understand? You know, art appreciation. You know, like, you wonder why these folks go to the museum and they just stand in front of art for a while and, and just, just kind of like, meditate it because a painting or a picture, it tells a thousand words. You know, a lot of, there's a lot of interpretive value in here because it's demonstrating the Israelites, the Beta Israel, right, coming out of Egypt. And it's very clear down here, you know, to see these kind of soldiers. And if you notice the, 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 the hairstyle, the smooth, no, no beards. This is classic um, Egyptian, no beards, right? But if you look at the men folk up here, you can see beards. You can see the simple white garments like what Solomon wore, what Yeshua HaMoshiach said that in Solomon, you know, in all his splendor and glory, he was not arrayed like one of these very simple garments here. You see the woman with 
their garments on, very modestly dressed. You, you see that very modest, it's like an Ethiopian garment right here, like a camis, right? You know, um, you can see the, there's the donkey right there, right? You can see some soldiers, just like, just like the Bible points out, you know, with the soldiers went in front, you know, the soldiers march in front. You can see their shields right here. This looks a, a, a little something like a shield, and this may be a shield as well. And then you can see this particular man here, right, like almost like a mosaic, like a Moses or Aaron sort of a figure. You understand? Um, or perhaps this is Moses and Aaron, or to symbolize Moses and Aaron, all right? And you can see the garment, like almost like a Joseph-type garment, like multi, you know, like multicolored and everything. You can see the, 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 the little ones, the children. You know what I'm saying? You can see the children right here. Perhaps one of these is Miriam. You know what I'm saying? As Moses sung the song, then Miriam, and she came with the woman folk, and you can see the woman folk up in here. You can see some other types over here as well, not too clear right there, even a youth right here. And it's interesting up here, this figure, which is like very angelic, is pointing to the Hebraic writing. You know, as, as, though, as though this up here, right, is matching what's going on right here. And these people are walking like on dry ground. You remember what it says in the scriptures in, 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 in um, Shemot or Orit Zetzat or the book, of, um, the book of Exodus, the movement of Yahweh's people, of Jah's people. You can see them coming out, right, on the dry sand. And then these are the dry ground. And these are drowned in the water. You can see even the difference in their outfits, the difference in their kind of shields, right? The difference in their particular style right here. You know, no beards. N notice that. You know, well, there's a young man here that has no beard, but it's, it was traditionally customary. Usually when you saw Egyptians, they would have the, maybe the little, you know, the, the, the kind of goatee sort of a beard. Yovas, um, and now you can see this one even looking behind and, and, and how the water here, like the Sea of Reeds, Yam Suf, right, Yam Suf. Now, some say Etara as well, right? Some say this is the, the Red Sea, and notice it's red too. Well, we have blue over here, and then we have a strip of green, all right? Like, like we already said, we only have a small portion of this. All right, now I'm sure there's probably more out here. We're going to have to find a little more on what's the name of it, you know, send the name of this particular piece. But this is evidence. Just want to demonstrate that this is evidence of the Beta Israel, the true Beta Israel, which looked nothing like the so called European Jews of today. I mean, it's, it's very obvious, it's very evident, it's very clear, the, the 58 or so curses within the scripture are only fulfilled on one people, so-called Negroes, Blacks, Coloreds, Latinos, others scattered in this region, the Western Hemisphere, namely the North Country, the particular prophecy, right, for, for Judah or Yehuda, so-called um, Afro-American, but that's two continents there. Our more correct nationality on an international level would be as Ethiopian Hebrews, and that does not depend on the present government of whatever government might be in so-called Ethiopia. You know, can remember the Lord, Yahweh, he is the landlord. You understand? It is, it is his land. So we have to get, once again, returned to the covenant. We have to repent. That's the main message, that we as a people have to repent. And um, it is uh, Yeshua, right? Yeshua, let's just bring... This in Yeshua, right, who has paid the price. If we would be wise, right, if we would be wise to salvation, all right, and thus will our enemies be our footstool. You, you see that's over here? The enemy is the footstool. You see that skull and bones down there? Remember Golgotha, right? Remember Golgotha right here? The skull and bones. So the same sort of picture. It's kind of set up, if you look at it. The people over here are walking on the, 
are walking on the on the dry ground, right? With salvation, with that shua, right? That shoa, right? And you can see Jesus Christus right here triumphing over over um, death, uh, the grave, and, and and hell. All right. And stay tuned to um, the et, the et, s, and the God particle. You understand? They're not just as a salvation mainly for our souls, our psyches, our state of mind. But when we understand it was also a DNA, right, a DNA rescue mission. Yes, it was a DNA. Yes, the melanin is important because a lot of our Afrocentrics, they might touch on Jesus being black and Moses being black, so forth and so on. But they even miss it. You understand? Though they have more of the historical, we can reason with them more of the historical and the spiritual and even the, 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 the mystical matter that comes out of Africa, that connects with the Bible, that connects with ancient Egypt. But there's a central core of it. Who are we? Where are we from? How and why did we get over here in this particular situation? Let's see if we if we can um, point that out. So here we have the overcoming of the people. Now, here we have one of the chief, right, one of the chief curses of this present time, right, so-called slavery, right, slavery, the enslavement. You know, who were these people? Just slaves? Just black people? That's no nationality. What were their tribes? What were their ethnicity? Oh, understand that. Then also we have what happened in 70 A.D., right, where the, where the Lord said that, Yahweh said that he would bring a nation out of the north, a fierce nation. Just keep this picture in mind, a fierce nation, right, against his people because his people had turned their backs on his law, on his way. They were following after the heathenish you understand, and, and the spiritually deceived and deluded and lascivious people around them. So Yahweh brought upon, upon Israel, right, speaking of the, the biblical Israel, this, this, this nation from the north, this nation from Europe, you understand, from the, from the European regions, the Roma, the, 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 the Greco, the Greco came, but they wasn't so bad. It, really, it was really when the Romans came. All right, when the Romans, but with the rise of, 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 of white supremacy, of, of European supremacy, roughly at that time. This is just to give you some word pictures because, as they say, uh, a picture paints a thousand, right? A picture paints a thousand words. And this right here, too, you see this kind of cross right here, right? This kind of cross right here. Yeah, sold as slaves. See, that's what the true Israel. Right? That's what the true Israel would go through. You understand? Because the true Israel, right, the real Israel, the Israel in your Bible, forsook the Moshiach, forsook Christ. What did they say? They said that they, they, won't, they won't have no king but Caesar. Now we have Caesar Borgia, Caesar Borgia, the imposter, the man of sin, the man of lawlessness. I mean... I mean, we already understand by their actions. See, you shall know them by their fruit. But how ironic it is that they said crucify him. And we're speaking about black people, black people. We're speaking about black people. You over, similar to black folks today. You understand what's going on in the so-called uh, churches and the religion and the misdirection and the miseducation. And they say well, they will have no king. You understand? But Caesar, all right? So because they did not have a love of the truth, the true God, Ha Elohim, Bruku, Hashem, caused, caused them to believe a lie, right? And for that man of perdition, that man of lawlessness, that, that counterfeit imposter Christ, the whitewashed, blonde hair, blue eye, so forth and so on. But that's just, a, that's just superficial. You understand? As we've been speaking on that's a superficial level. You understand? If they can do that with the image, how much more with the doctrine? And we see this over and over. So this, this, this vid right here was mainly to, to bring this picture more into perspective, right? This picture right here more into perspective. And before we go out, let's just give you a, a, 
a little close up. Right, a little more of a close up of, 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 of who's who here. Right? And as you can see the features. Like we say they bury this. They bury this deep. Right? But someone was able to get a, a snapshot, you know, the sand of it and you can see what the what the Exodus Israelites, an image of what the Exodus Israelites look like. And just let's get the, the sort of an angelic figure at the top right there. Remember what, what the Lord said? Yahweh said that he would, um, there will be an angel, right, that would go before them, right, to lead them in all the way, right? And you can see even with this garment here, perhaps this is a Moses figure, perhaps this is Moses and Aaron. He overs, it's not named there, but it's very interesting when you see the type of garment, you see the jewelry, notice how, how much jewelry they have on. Right, if you really look, you know how much jewelry they have on. All right, it's not like the jewelry that y'all get today, which comes out of Africa too, the blood diamonds and everything else. I mean, how foolish is that? Now that's your inheritance over there, but instead you 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 accept like a a middleman. But that's part of the curses. That's one of the fifty-eight curses on the true Beta Israel. So you see, the angel here is pointing to this very proto-Hebrew writing up here. Right, he's pointing to this writing, right, that guidance up here. Now we move to the bottom part of the picture, right? We move to the lower part of the picture, right? And, and see, like they are not even paying attention to these guys down here, right? These Egyptians in the water. Remember, um, Pharaoh. They say Pharaoh and his uh, and his um, armies. They were drowned in the Yam Suf, the Sea of Reeds, which sometimes is called the Red Sea. So you have this once again. How come this picture has not been, you know, used, you know, like before? How come they don't show this picture? Well, it's kind of obvious why they don't show this picture, you know, along with all the brothers and sisters and ones who are beginning to remember, you know, and that's part of the prophecy. You know, in this rise and us remembering and thinking about and asking these questions. How come every other people... In America can talk about where they're from, and we're talking about two continents, Africa and American. You understand Africa and America. You understand and, and have no links and ties and all that we have been through and all we continue to go through. But here's the key, is that it matches exactly what Yahweh has in the Scripture. So the real um, pointing of the matter right here is to Yeshua. Right? It's to Yeshua. You ever wonder why the black man is, um, is, is still lynched? You ever wonder why they say that the only um, good Negro, the only good nigger is a dead nigger? You, ever, you see what it's pointing to right here? You see how it's pointing to, pointing to the cross? Right? Pointing to the cross, the crossroads, right? The cross. Now look at the two kind of crosses right here for a moment. You see it? You see the two type of crossings? Right here? Well, this was the Exodus. This was the Pesach, the Fasica, right? The crossing over, right? The Nibiru, or what they call the, the, the Hathor Comet, that planet, the fear of the black planet, the brown dwarf star, Nibiru, planet X, so forth and so on. The pla it's called the planet of the crossing, right? It's called the planet of the crossing. So they, they cross over. Right? They crossed over. The Egyptians were drowned. But yet you see the racial type of the Egyptians, right? And the racial types of Beta Israel, right? What, the, what some may call the Haberu. You know, and the Haberu basically was a name, not so much Hebrew. There was two levels of Hebrew. One was Haberu, ones who crossed over, entered into Egypt like immigrants. And there was the priest, the Heb, right? The, you know, the, the Hebrew or the Hebre the Hebrae, the, a certain order of priests. But we've touched on that elsewhere. But they're pointing to, right, it's all, remember the Old Testament is the New Testament, right, concealed within types and similes. And the New Testament, right, is the Old Testament revealed. So that pointing, all of that was pointing to Yeshua, right, when we recognize what Hebrews uh, uh, 10 and 20 says. Right in a new and a living, a new and a living way. Let's just sum up right here. Let's go to Hebrews ten and twenty, so we can understand 
what the art, what the what the um, testimony, right, that has come out of the earth. You know, all this art and facts buried deep in the earth, and you you can imagine from this one. This one evidence and proof of the Exodus. See, there was an Exodus, but it wasn't the Exodus of the Ashkenazis, you know, the Ashkenazi Jews or Ashkenaz, right, Jews. It wasn't that sort of Exodus. So that's why they say, oh, there's no, right, there's no evidence of it. Now there's a lot of Jewish writers. This one at the Hebrew University says that the whole Jewish, modern Jewish thing was made up in the 19th century, that there's no connection Right, you know, there's no connection with the biblical people because the biblical people, even Tacitus, Tacitus, Cornelius Tacitus, the Roman historian during the time of Emperor Vespasian and General uh, Tito or Titus, said that the Jews that he had encountered were the the Ethiopian prolem. Ethiopian prolem means of the seed or the race of the Ethiopians. This is why Joseph and Moses, right, even, even, even Paul in the New Testament of the Bible are all thought to be, even Yeshua HaMoshiach, when he, he was a babe and his mother, Kedistin Gamaria, and Yosef, right, went into Egypt to hide, right, to hide from this massacre. You understand? It was like the abortion thing was going on even then. Right, that's to stop the rise of the black Messiah, the Moshiach, right, to stop that rise. So we have here in uh, Hebrews 10 and, um, in 10 and uh, 20, but we'll just begin from verse 19 right here. It says, it says, um, it says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of of Yeshua. Now, remember blood in, in, in Genesis, because remember the Torah is the foundation. That's the schoolmaster that brings us to the Moshiach. In um, Genesis chapter, I think it's 9, it points out that the blood is the life of, of, the, of, of, of the creature, of the animal, of, of a human being, the blood. So when, it, when the Israelite, well, when, when Noah and his descendants, the survivors, Noah, Right, no, when that, that, that links with the Ankh actually, and we'll touch on that as well. But when um, Noah and his family, they were told that they, at that time, they could eat of, of, of debtors or of animals, but they were not to eat of the blood, right, the, the blood. Now, the modern Jews will tell you, well, that this whole thing about kosher, but you'll find that kosher does not, the word kosher or kashrut does not even appear in their Masoretic, and the Masora mean tradition. Remember, Yeshua, he was coming against the what of the Pharisees? The tradition, because that was the Babylonian Talmud, all right? Remember, Yeshua was coming from an Ethiopic, an Ethiopian, uh, the remnant, the, the, the kingdom of David renewed in Ethiopia, from which we get his imperial majesty, Hala Selassie, and the Beta Israel, and, and the revelation that we know as Rastafari revelation. But it says that, therefore, brethren, therefore, it says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest, the holy of holies, by the blood of Yeshua or by the life of Jesus, by, by his way. Why? Because it's by a new and a living way, which he has consecrated. He has made that caduce holy for us, for I and I and I, through the veil. Remember when Christ was crucified, the veil in the temple was, was rent from top to bottom? That is to say, his flesh. So it says that we have to recognize the truth that Christ is black, but we have to really practice the spirituality, the living Torah of Yeshua. Yobs and to, like Yeshua, overcome the skull and bones, right? To overcome the skull and bones right here. And that 322, people always ask about the number. What's that number, 322, no, skull and bones, right? The number of Golgotha, 322, is very simple. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. And now make that connection to Yeshua. All right, make that connection to Yeshua, a new and a living way, 
a new and a living way. This is very, very um, important for for I and I um, to um, consider. And having a high priest over the house of God, the true high priest over the true Beta Israel, the true house of God is Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior. Let us draw near with a true heart, a true consciousness, in full assurance of faith, in the full assurance of the imuna, of the amen, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, an, 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 an evil conscience. See, that's part of the curse, right? An evil conscience. So we must have our, 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 our hearts, our consciousness sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That's the mikveh, right? That's the mikvah. That's the baptism, right? That's the timket. Let us hold fast, hold firmly the profession of our hymenot, our living faith, without wavering, without being double-minded. For he is faithful that promised. He said that once we repent, right, as a people, he will open up the way for us to gather into our own land, the land which he has given us from the very beginning, all right? And let us consider one another to provoke to love and to good works. So we have to consider each other. If we provoke each other, it should be provoking one another to what? To love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. You see, the Israelites were able to come out because they assembled together. Remember Passover, Fasika, right, which is the Seder, which is the very same Seder that Yeshua partook of with his um, Dekam as Amorit, his disciples. And it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting, right, but like counseling and building up one another. And so much the more as ye see the day coming. As we see this, we asked and we did a vid 2012 or 2020. Check out those eight years between the Gregorian and the Julian calendar. Well, what about 1619 when the first um, Beta Israel Falasha of the, of the West exiles, so-called enslaved Africans or enslaved Hebrews, came and were brought to this to the Virginia colony, in the same Willie Lynch, How to Make a Slave. That was 1619. Now, 400 years would bring us to the end of this cycle that 2012 actually opens up. This is just some food for thought for right now, my brothers and sisters. Um, I just wanted to just touch on this particular rare piece of artwork. I don't know how they're going to try to explain and lie this one away. You understand? But we... We know the truth, all right, and no lie is of the truth. You see the Beit Israel right here. You see the Egyptians right here. You see the angel up here. You see the writing. This was the Passover of the Old Testament, and this is the Passover of the New, all right? And, and so this is what ends the curse. Shalom.